I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise continually in my mouth. There is none like the Lord Jesus. There is none more mighty. There is none more wonderful. Lord God, I worship you and I thank you. I thank you with all of my heart for your word that you have spoken to us, God, that you have left for us, God, the privilege of having your word. Lord God, help us to have hearts to understand, ears to hear, eyes to see. Lord, we pray for salvation for every nation, starting in Jerusalem. We pray, God, for salvation for every people, every tribe, every language, Lord God. As you promised, we speak your truth, your word. Help us to receive you today, God. You alone are worthy of all the praise of all the glory of all the majesty there is none like you lord your love is greater god your love is greater than any amount of love that could be known in this earth any amount of love that could be known in any life lord god we cannot explain the love that you have we cannot explain the perfect way lord god that you love us the perfect way that you pour out your spirit upon us oh god thank you for leaving your spirit for us lord thank you jesus that you came in the flesh that you died on the cross and that you rose again lord we just love you and thank you for all of your mercy, all of your grace, all of your promises are ours, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. For there is none like you. There is none more mighty than you, Lord. There is none more wonderful than you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name thank you lord thank you lord glory and honor and majesty be unto you lord hallelujah today i'm reading in john the 11th chapter this time was when lazarus a very close friend of jesus was ill and he passed away and jesus raised him from the dead our god does miracles our god is able there is no name above the name of jesus there is nothing that he cannot do there is no mountain that he cannot move have faith in him thank you lord god for you alone you alone are our source you are our provision you are our help you are the holy, holy lamb of God. Thank you, God. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Mary and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, 
he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus hath, has fallen asleep, but I go to wake him up. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin and said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the, of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my mother, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is coming into the world. The life that Jesus would give is available to all of us. Our soul lives on after the physical or natural death. And it's our choice to have that everlasting eternal life that Jesus offers when we believe in him, when we receive his spirit. Thank you, Lord. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here, is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. He was human and God. He had emotions. He understands our hurts when we lose someone that we love. He wept with them. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Yes, of course he could have. But it was a greater thing that Jesus would show the Jews because everything that the Pharisees and the Jews had seen they still refused to believe him. They still wanted to kill him. They still wanted to say that he had a demon. They could not believe that he was doing these things. It was right in front of their eyes. And yet they had unbelief. Then Jesus deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead for four days. 
Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? The significance of him being dead four days is a tradition or an understanding in the Jewish community that at that fourth day, there was no hope of that body being revived or any hope that it would come back from a possible misdiagnosis of death or something like that. The fourth day was absolute. The soul was gone. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? There was a plan here. There was a purpose. It all leads to salvation. When we can see the glory of God, how will our hearts respond? In Jesus, the hope was for that glory of God to wake those people up. So they took away the stone. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, then believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. The Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation and not only for the nation, but also to gather into one, the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. Jesus therefore no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think, that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should let them know so that they may arrest him. It was the work that Jesus did while he was here. Even though he knew that he was going to Calvary, he knew from the time he was young, he knew his purpose. He was fully God and fully man. And in the fully man state, he had those same feelings that any of us would have knowing that we were going to be put to death in such a terrible way. Prophecy had been given well before the time of Jesus about the Messiah coming, about his death. He knew. He held fast to his mission. He held fast to the word of God and the law. He did not sin. He held fast to what he was commissioned to do. For 30 years, he lived. He was sinless. He was understanding his mission. How many of us have lived up to the age of 30 and think back on our lives and what they were. 
and what Jesus may have gone through in his life with this knowledge. Then he spent three years trying to pour his light out, to show the truth, to be, to give grace and truth, to give the word for the disciples to carry on, the apostles to take, to begin the first church in Acts, all of the instruction that he gave, everything that he said that there is no other way to the Father but by him, that he is the door, he is the shepherd, he is the life, he is the light of the world, that no man comes to the Father but by him. Over and over in those three years, he gave example after example and told and gave direction for the lives of all people. He did everything possible for them to believe him, including the prophecies that they saw fulfilled themselves that were from the time he was born, that he would be born of a virgin. He was fully aware of sin. When he made his body this offering, it wasn't just the physical stripes, the physical pain. It wasn't the agony only, but a greater agony of the sins of the whole world that he took upon himself to carry to the cross that we might have salvation, that we might be able to repent and turn from our sin for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are the children in the world of Adam, the first man that sinned, and we inherited that sin. We have that disease of sin. And the blood was the cure. Jesus' blood was the absolute cure for sin. You hear about people getting blood transfusions, and it doesn't have anything to do with the person, color of their skin, or where they came from. That blood is the antidote for the the illness that's going on if they have to have a, a blood transfusion or whatever is happening in the physical. But Jesus' blood was the antidote for sin. His pure blood that he shed, that he poured out on Calvary was the antidote for sin. That we might all come to him and be saved turn from our ways, repent of our sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about being buried with him in baptism, that we go under the water in the name of Jesus. When we profess that name, when that name is professed over us in baptism, we are going down with him in baptism. There is significance to that burial, to that water burial. There is significance. We are coming into agreement with the cross. We are coming into agreement with the blood. We are coming into agreement with the death that he suffered. And we are buried with him in baptism. But it doesn't stop there. We are able to be filled with his spirit, filled to overflowing rivers of living water, overflowing in us. His spirit in us, being able to live day in and day out with his spirit, 
the spirit of the Lord, fear of the Lord, wisdom, knowledge, counsel, might, and understanding. The love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the meekness, the kindness, all, all of that to put on the armor of God, our helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness, our loins girt about with truth, our sword of the spirit, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. When we have the spirit of the Lord, we have all of these things. We have understanding. We have understanding as never before of the word that he left us. His word breathed. God breathed into the hearts of men that wrote on paper, on stone, on papyrus, on whatever manner or medium they had to write with. God breathed that. It's his word. He is the word. In John, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus put on that robe of flesh and brought what he spoke to us. And we have that word now. We have his spirit now. He is on the throne and we are here on this earth that has an enemy. Satan is our enemy. He is against us. He's only here to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to turn our hearts and our minds away from the true Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus loves us. He gave his life for us. As we continue in John, we will read more about that. But know today that he is a miracle working God and he gave himself. He gave himself through all of the time that he spent here and he is alive forevermore. When we receive the spirit, we are raised with him to newness of life. Thank you, God. I encourage everyone, receive the Spirit of the Lord. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be baptized in his name. Live in liberty from every device of the enemy, every chain broken. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I declare salvation for every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every people from Jerusalem, and all nations, that is the promise of our Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for today. I pray for everyone for salvation. I pray for children. I pray for adults. I pray for elderly folks and teenagers. I pray for each one that we would have salvation and that we would know liberty in you, Lord. For he who the Son has made free, is free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.